Hey guys, Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to create some pretty abstract stuff using trap code form and OBJ objects. I've been experimenting lately with a lot of OBJs and trap code form. You guys have been asking me how to create these uh, abstract renders I've been posting on Twitter and Facebook. And so I thought I'd show you guys how to do that today in this tutorial. So before we get started, I want to go ahead and thank the great folks over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is an awesome platform that makes it fast and easy to create an exceptional website. For a free trial and 10% off, head over to squarespace.com and use the promo code DOJO11 at checkout. So back to the tutorial, you guys are very interested in creating some abstract stuff, but today we're using trap code form and how to use OBJs with them, how to create some pretty abstract renders such as this one right here, uh, which has some organic movement and a kind of uh, focus shift here. We also have another one here as an example. This one kind of reminds me of a flower, so let me do a quick random preview on this. So it just kind of explodes out and kind of flourishes out. And although you can create some pretty interesting and abstract shapes using trap code form itself, it's actually kind of difficult to get a kind of an object oriented shape uh, just using trap code form alone. And just by using some abstract OBJ models, it makes things a lot easier and gives it more of a shape. Uh, that you can kind of control. So here's another example here, kind of reminds me of fire. And these are just examples I whipped up in about like five minutes, just playing around with some random OBJ files in Cinema 4D and just importing it and turning on the camera here. So this is nothing uh, too spectacular, but with a little work and some creativity, you can create some pretty interesting stuff. So first I'm gonna talk about how to create an OBJ model or file. And I'm gonna be using Cinema 4D in this particular case. So I'm using Cinema 4D, but of course you can use your own 3D application like Maya, Blender, uh, you know, 3ds Max, whatever you can use. Almost all 3D programs can create OBJ files. They're very, uh, you know, standard. So it's nothing special and it's nothing uh, specific to a program here. So this 3D model here is the actual 3D model I used to create the kind of purple uh, Zerg looking form animation here. And this one here is actually the flower OBJ that I used to create that flower one that I just showed you here. And as you can see, this is pretty much as abstract as you can get. This is not, you know, anything particular. This is a whole bunch of geometry just kind of smashed up, twisted, and just create an interesting look. And just by creating this random blob of geometry here, you can create some pretty interesting uh, looking trap code form renders uh, using the vertex or the points of this geometry here. So as you can see, we have this nice little rounded tip here that creates kind of that flower look. So pretty interesting here. I'm gonna create a new project in Cinema 4D. And let's go ahead and start with a cube. I like to start with cubes or you know pyramids, just something that gives you geometry that you can edit uh, in the object manager here. So actually, I may not want to use a cube in this example just because it's easier to use this object here. And then we can just increase the segment this way. So I'll just pull the radius up to 300. And uh, we'll work with this here. So I'm going to increase the segments to about 10 for now. So we have something to start off with. And then pretty much from here, all you got to do is just mess the shape up to create some abstract objects here. And the best way to do that uh, is to use the deformers here. So you have a few options here, such as the bulge, the twist, the bend, um, you know, a lot of options that you can use here. So I'm going to go ahead and use maybe a twist. And I want to make it a child of the object here. Let me bring this thing up and increase the size to about 500, 500, and 500. And we'll just set this mode to unlimited. And then we'll just go ahead and increase the angle. And as you can see, it twists the object as you would expect here. So this is pretty cool. And this may be a little bit too much here. So we'll just set it to like 250 or so. Just so we get some abstract shapes. And then we'll just you know, keep on adding some more. So we'll add a bulge effect. Make sure it's in the same level as a twist here. So just play like that. And we'll go to the bulge. We'll increase the size to 500, 500, and 500 as well. And we'll just move the container up. And you know, we'll pull up the strength. So it's very interesting just to experiment with this kind of stuff and you know, play with this. And then maybe we can add a, let's see here, maybe a taper and apply it here and we'll just increase it so it kind of just tapers at the edge. So essentially we're creating this really, really abstract object and just by playing with these, uh, you know, deformers here, we can actually create some pretty interesting stuff. And you can do this with Element 3D as well. Just create an abstract model and just, you know, apply some interesting textures, add some depth of field, you can create some pretty interesting stuff uh, in the background as abstract objects here. So one last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a melt deformer here and this is very, very interesting. Uh, to do 
I'll make it a child here, and as you can see, it kind of creates this melting effect, which is not exactly what we want in this particular case. Let's go ahead and set the strength down to about 10, so it's a little bit smaller. And then we'll increase the radius to about like 10 as well, so we get these kind of spiky edges here. And then maybe change the melted size down a little bit to like 250 or so. And zoom up here, and we create this kind of edgy, bladed looking thing here. And then just by, you know, playing around with the strength, you can get some pretty interested jagged results here. Go into the object here and as you can see we're very limited by our points here and I don't think this is enough points to kind of convey what this object kind of looks like using particles so let's go ahead and increase the segments up to about 50 so this is a lot of geometry now maybe set it to around 35 and we can always reduce the number of points in traffic form itself so this is a pretty nice feature here so I'm gonna go ahead and use maybe this object here maybe just play around with it a little bit more so by just messing around with these settings here and changing the order of these deformers here, you can create something interesting like this here. So let's say I want to use this as my OBJ model in form. Let's go ahead and export this out into uh, an OBJ file here. So in Cinema 4D, you're pretty limited to um, what you can do with OBJ files. In other 3D applications such as 3ds Max, you have more flexibility in terms of exporting OBJ files here. But and so for Cinema 4D, essentially we go to File and we go to Export and we go to Wavefront OBJ. And then we'll just give it a title here, such as uh, abstractobject.obj, hit save. And then for the scale, you know, we'll set it just to 1 here. We don't need to be too large, so we'll hit OK. So before we bring this into After Effects, I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break and thank our sponsors over at Squarespace. Squarespace is the only one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional online website, store, or portfolio. They have over 20 highly customizable and professionally designed templates. With their click and drag interface, adding content is a breeze, and starting at just $8 a month you can get a free domain name if you sign up for a year. You can start your free trial of Squarespace by going to squarespace.com. Now when you do decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure you use promo code DOJO11 to get 10% off the life of your order and support the dojo. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. So back in After Effects, we're ready to import our OBJ model that we exported here. So we'll go to create a new composition, and we'll just call this Abstract Object, and we'll hit OK. We'll create a new solid, call this VG, and this is very important for the blending modes and all that stuff to work properly. So you want to create a background layer. Don't just um, you know do stuff with a transparent background here. And then we'll go ahead and create another new solid, and we'll call this Form. And we'll apply trap code form to this particular solid here. So we'll go to trap code and apply trap code form. So the default you get um, a grid here. And so we don't want a grid, we want to tell form to use an OBJ model as the kind of base shape of it. So we'll go from box form from box grid to OBJ model. And now we have to tell form what OBJ 3D model to use. In this case, we want to go ahead and import our OBJ model. And so go ahead and select the OBJ file that we just created. And as you can see, you can actually import an OBJ sequence. But in this case, this is just a still frame, or I guess just one particular frame shot of the OBJ file here. So we'll bring this into this composition here. And by default, it says OBJ for use with track code form. So we can't see it. So we'll just disable it. But we just need the data for it. So we'll go to form and tell form to use that particular abstract OBJ file. So here we have our uh, OBJ file made out of particles here. So we'll just create a new camera and we'll just zoom in here. So just, just this alone is pretty cool how we can create a fully 3D shape using particles and using the OBJ model here. So that's pretty cool. So like I said before, there's too many points for you because you added too many vertices. Not a problem. You can actually go into form and reduce the number of points by increasing the skip vertex. So if we set it to like 50, you can see that it reduced the number of points significantly. So we'll just set it for zero at now because I know I didn't add too much because I know what I'm doing in this particular case here. And if you had an OBJ sequence, you can actually animate and you know play around with the speed of it here in form here. So we'll close that for now. I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and set the size to around 300, 300 by 300. And I usually like to keep it uh, to one to one to one ratio, but of course you feel free to experiment with that. We'll go to the particles tab. We'll set the sphere feather down to about like 5 to 10 because I'm not a big fan of the sphere feather in this particular case. And I want to reduce the particle size from 1 to about 0.5. We may need to go lower once we start zooming in and stuff like that. So we'll set the size randomness to about 25 here so we have some randomness and the opacity to around 
25 as well. And we'll go ahead and select our color here. So I'm going to select this kind of nice blue teal color. Hit OK. And then we can go into the fractal field here and just kind of messes up a little bit more. So we'll just set the effect size to 1 and the effect opacity to 1. So the fractal field is going to influence these, uh, the size and the opacity here. We'll displace it just by a little bit, by maybe like 20 or so. And then we'll change the uh, maybe the flow to about uh, 10. So it's going to flow upwards a little bit. And then we'll also increase the evolution flow uh, to 5. So it won't be moving too much here, but we do want some movement. And of course, if you want to twist it and add your own little flare to it, you can twist it here, but I'll just leave it at zero for now. And we'll go into the base form once more and just kind of find an interesting angle here. So the cool part about this is that it's fully 3D. You can see that we get some pretty interesting shapes here. And the goal to create interesting abstract stuff using form or anything really, is to find an interesting abstract angle or spot. And of course, you can do this with Element 3D as well. So let's go ahead and uh, find an interesting angle here. I think it's pretty cool how we can uh, we can set it to like something like this and zoom in to the top here. Or we can even, you know, pretend this is a vortex and, you know, go into the middle here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it would look like if we just kind of went in here. So take our camera you know, we'll just kind of zoom in. I'm hitting C on the keyboard to change the tools here. So hit the orbit tool, maybe find an interesting angle, you know, maybe something like this. And then we'll go into the camera, hit AA to bring up the camera options, and we'll set the depth of field to on. And this is one of the key things here. So we'll set the aperture to around 50. And then we'll change the focus distance to where we can actually see something that's in focus. So just play around here until you get something in focus. So here we have the vortex in focus. So we'll set it to around there and we'll just play around the camera a little bit more. So maybe right here or something like that and then we'll just animate the camera. We'll hit P on the keyboard to bring up the position and we'll just animate it over maybe like four seconds or so. Let me just move over here so we kind of get a perspective of 3D. So something like this. And then maybe we can go in here and uh, play around with the focus distance here. So we'll set the aperture to around 75. We kind of want to blur this thing out a little bit. And set the blur level to like 120. And then we'll just play around with the focus distance. Maybe we'll Go to the beginning here, maybe focus on the outer particles. Hit keep in for the focus distance. And we'll move forward and maybe you, at this point you want to focus on the bottom here. Or the vortex of it. So maybe we'll just, something like this, you know, something random like this. And just to kind of give it an abstract thing, so of course you can find some more interesting angles and some more interesting abstract places. And all you know, it all just depends on your angle. So as you can see, you can get some pretty interesting angles. Of course, this is not the best angle I think for this particular model, but um, of course, it all just depends on your model here. So, so if you have a more elaborate model, it can be more a lot more interesting here. But in this case, things are pretty linear. Uh, but I'll just keep it at this, just to keep the tutorial pretty simple here. So you kind of get a general idea of what I'm talking about here. So essentially just try to find a good angle here and kind of just crank up the depth of field to create some abstract looking things. And I believe this is what Imaginary Forest is, the design team behind the Pacific Rim ending title sequence or the credit sequence. I believe this is what they did. I remember reading it somewhere or watching a video somewhere on FXPHD where they kind of just zoomed in on um, maybe like a shoulder or the neck of a Jaeger or something like that and just added some depth of field, added some you know abstract elements and stuff like that to create a very interesting abstract title uh, for the credits of Pacific Rim here. So I'll probably link to that post down below in the article so check that out but essentially you know the same thing can apply for element 3D here. Just find an interesting angle, add some depth of field and add some interesting elements and you create a pretty interesting look. So I'm going to hop back into form really quick and just adjust some of this so maybe set the size to around 4 
or so here and then we can uh, apply a quick color grade and color correction so I'm gonna apply maybe let's check out a glow apply glow then see what this looks like here and we'll set the threshold to around like 85 or so and then we'll crank down the intensity to like 0.1 and maybe just tweak this a little bit and I am working in 16 bits per channel so that's something uh, important to remember here so I also want to quickly color correct and color grade this just to make it look a little bit more interesting so I'm going to open my dojo toolkit script and you can get this script for free at the creativedojo.net I'm going to quickly add a letterbox here actually I'm going to add a grain first add a color grade and then add a letterbox so we get something like this and by default it applies match bullet looks here so maybe we can hop in and take a look at some of the things that it has to kind of inspire you so we have the bleach bypass here which looks pretty cool uh you know we're only in here really to kind of get an idea of what we want if we don't really know what we want uh like me in this case here so you know i'm kind of liking the bleach bypass cool and maybe we can just delete the film grain and maybe just crank up the midtones just a little bit and then we'll hit finish something like that is okay uh, maybe we can desaturate a little bit so we'll just turn up the tint a little bit you know something basically like this and then we'll just hop into the camera maybe we can even crank up the aperture even more to like a hundred or so I uh, kinda wanna just focus on this focused area here so maybe like 120 yeah I know we're kinda overkilling it here but something like this and then we'll go back into form we'll go to the particles maybe we'll set the size to like 0.3 so it's a little bit lighter and it's less overblown. And I think if I were to go back, I would actually increase the number of segments here. Because I don't think we have enough particles uh, in this area right here. So I'd probably go back and uh, change that if uh, I had the time here. So this is what we have so far. You know, it's not looking the best, but it is definitely abstract. And with a little work, you can get some pretty interesting results here. So. But let's say maybe you didn't like this too much, you know, it's pretty easy to just kind of change the camera angle. So we can go position here, maybe delete these keyframes. And uh, maybe turn off the field temporarily. And then we can just kind of orbit around and just find another interesting angle that you want to kind of portray. So maybe, uh, maybe flip this around a little bit. Maybe something like this. Just move the camera up. And maybe you want to focus on this kind of tip. You would just turn on depth of field and then go ahead and adjust the focus distance so you know maybe you'll start focusing on the bottom here and then it'll just rack focus in about two seconds to uh the top here so we'll just play around with the focus distance and we'll just focus on the top particles here and we'll just shift this over here and we'll just do a quick ram preview so as you can see, it's something very, very abstract. And if you just, you know, created a more complex model and maybe add some more, you know, versions of form in there, some variations of form in there, you can create some pretty interesting renders using track quick form, all because you just imported a model and just zoomed up really close and added some depth of field to it. So hopefully this tutorial kind of answered some of your questions on how to create some abstract renders using trap code form. I know we didn't really learn anything, I didn't really teach you anything new per se, but it was definitely something that I found really interesting that you guys want to figure out how I did it. So you guys found it interesting, so hopefully this tutorial uh, helped you guys out with that. So if you guys have any further tutorial ideas or questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial guys. Experiment, have fun, have fun in Cinema 4D creating your abstract objects or OBJ files. Bring them in, have fun, and crank that dip the field up. So, my name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.